All right, just making a quick video. This is a Growatt 1500, and if you're not familiar with Growatt, they've been making solar inverters for like larger uh, off-grid systems for quite a few years now, right? So they're finally getting into the power station market, so uh, I thought we'd just take a look at it. Specs-wise, 1500 watt-hour battery. It is an NMC battery though, right? But it does have a 2000 watt uh, inverter. And those are, you know, some pretty good specs, especially for something that only weighs 36 pounds. So at 36 pounds, you can kind of, you know, pick this thing up, move it around. It's definitely portable, right? Like portable power station is definitely portable. And that's, that's the benefit of NMC batteries, right? So, um, yeah, let's just take a look at the uh, design, right? So first thing you notice is it's got this really unique floating handle design. And, uh, you know, actually, I kind of like it because it is something different. And, you know, it's going to give you plenty of clearance for getting your hands under there and grabbing it easily. And ultimately, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, it has these large fixed handles on each end, right? And I'm a big fan of fixed handles. I think on these power stations, when you're moving something that has some weight to it, having a fixed handle is just better than having, like, uh, something with a folding handle or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I like that, but, you know, other than the handle design, it's basically just the plain gray rectangular box, right? And, um, actually, there's a good reason for that, is that internally, this thing shares a lot in common with the comparable EcoFlow unit, right? So, in this case, um, the comparable unit is the EcoFlow Delta Max 1600. I'm not exactly sure if it's, you know, exactly the same inside. I don't think it's exactly the same, but it's pretty close, right? They're using some of the same parts. So that kind of dictates that shape that we see there. Um, you know, another thing that I notice is that, you know, unfortunately, they only have these two switches, right? So there's one for AC, one for DC. And, um, you know, this DC switch turns on the USB, the 12 volt, <laughs> and the wireless charger, right? So that's a bit unfortunate. I like to see separate switches for all of those uh, functions. And in this case, um, it would have been really a good idea to have it because this battery is actually has a nominal voltage of around 50 volts. So that's pretty high, right? Um, you know, remember this 12 volt outlet is actually going to be somewhere around 13 volts. USB is around 5 volts for, you know, the regular ones. And the USB-C can go up to 20 volts. And then the wireless charger, um, I don't even know. Does anyone know? Does anyone know what those run at? Is that 5 volts or what? But anyways, it's a lot less than 50 volts, right? So, um, you know, if you just wanted to run something, like one little thing off of one of these USB ports, you got to have this on, you know, all the USB ports on, and the wireless charger on, right? And um, so you're going to get some efficiency loss there, right? And... Um, and like I said, when you have, in, in particular with this unit, when you have a high um, nominal battery voltage, you got to convert that down, right? So you got to convert that down to 13 volts here, convert that down to 5 volts there and over here as well, right? So um, in this case, it would have been a really good idea just to have like a switch for USB, a switch here, and another switch to turn that wireless charger on. Um, so you're probably going to see less than average efficiency numbers for DC stuff, right? Um, the only benefit is you might actually see higher than normal efficiency numbers for the AC stuff, especially with, with large loads, right? And I think we do see that if you look at um, testing results from, the, from like the EcoFlow Delta Max units. I think you do kind of see that, right? So I'll probably see the same thing here. Um, but yeah, otherwise, and then we just have kind of this, you know, basic screen. It does give you the information you want, right? It does have the percentage, the actual percentage. It has, you know, input, output watts, and time remaining, right? So, and, and it looks, you know, it looks pretty decent. Like, it's just a, it's a basic screen, but it's not, you know, offensive or anything, you know, and it gets the job done. So, let's just, um, let's just move on and see what else they got to talk about. So this is just all of the outlets, and I think, you know, we kind of already uh, talked about a lot of those. Um, the inverter, yep, 2,000 watt inverter, so that's pretty good. That basically, you know, anything you can plug into the wall, anything that's 120 volts is going to run off that inverter, right? So, 
yep we like to see that and it's also got the 4000 watt um, surge on it which i like to see a 2x or a double of the surge um, so yeah that's good so ups less than 20 milliseconds right so um yeah i'd like to see this closer to like less than 10 milliseconds but um, for most things less than 20 milliseconds that's going to be a fast enough switch over right um, let's see solar so 800 watts of solar they're saying it can charge it up in two and a half hours and um, you know something that they don't actually talk about in this listing is the voltage range of this thing right which i just i, I really just don't understand because one of the best things about this unit is that the voltage range for solar is 12 to 100 volts, right? So, um, and they don't mention that anywhere in this listing, which is just crazy because that 100 volt max limit is actually very high. Like, um, I don't think there's any other units that are like directly comparable to this unit that can run up to 100 volts of solar, right? So that just means you're not going to have to use a bunch of um, parallel adapters and stuff like that to hook up solar panels. And really, it just means you can pretty much hook up any solar panel, anything that you come across, right? You're going to be able to hook it up to this unit. And of course, you know, we expect that from GrowWatt, right? Because that's kind of been their specialty. Um, so, but yeah, just like crazy that they didn't add that to uh, this listing. So let's just keep moving. 80% um, in one hour. This is charging from the wall. That's kind of uh, typical nowadays is, you know, what we, what we see is like a, a fast charge option from the wall. And then the app, right? So, and what's nice about this app is, yeah, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, right? So not just Wi-Fi. So you don't always have to, if you don't have Wi-Fi, like you can use Bluetooth, right? Um, you know, some, some units, the app is only Wi-Fi. So if, you know, if, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, then you're, you're SOL basically, right? So, um, yeah, let's just keep going. Okay. Just the main picture again. So yeah, let's just scroll down, take a look at the, what else they got to say here. So as I mentioned, the 36 pounds, so that's definitely going to appeal to a lot of you. Um, as far as everything else we see here, I think we already covered this all. But yeah, again, um, here's where they mentioned the solar, right? 800 watts. They don't mention that voltage limit, um, which I just, you know, I can't believe that. They need to add that because that's definitely a selling feature of this unit. Uh, let's just move down. So yeah, GrowWatt talking about um you know basically just that they're an established company right this is not just some new company um they've been making these solar inverters for quite a few years so yeah um let's just move on talking about the specs again nothing new here let's see okay so they do have right there so they're using xt60 for the solar right and then of course we can tell here from this as well that there's just going to be a standard um, cord, right? There's not going to be, for charging from the wall, there's not going to be like a power brick or anything like that. So that's good. Um, let's see what else we got here. The USB cooling and the solar. Yep, and there you go again. They, they always talk about 800 watts, but they don't mention the voltage range. And uh, yeah, so that's about, that's about it, right? BMS. We talked about the UPS. We talked about the app. So yeah, that's um, that's about it. It's you know, it's not like a, a groundbreaking design or anything like that. But like I said, having that solar that can do 800 watts up to 100 volts, I think that's that's really the main selling feature combined with the fact that it is very lightweight for these specs. And you're going to be able to just move it around and, and uh, you know, pick it up, put it in your car, whatever, whatever you got to do with it, no problem, right? So I think there's definitely a market for this, for someone who wants something portable and who can just hook up a ton of solar to it, right? And with that 2,000 watt inverter, pretty much power anything with it, right? So yeah, it's not, um, it's not an LFP battery thing, but, um, you know, you might find this uh, appealing for all those other reasons, right? So... Yeah, so hopefully um, you find this interesting or helpful. 
And yeah, thanks for watching.